Well, the Democratic Party of Arkansas has a new man in the saddle. Former state representative Will Bond is now the chairman of the state Democrats. What's on his agenda? What's he going to try to do to reverse the course of the 2010 election cycle, which saw Republicans make historic gains in Arkansas? And what's his take on the current legislative session? I caught up with Bond earlier to talk politics. All right, this is a tough job, especially in light of this last election cycle, Will. Did um, did you lose your sanity? Why did you take this job? Well, I've, I've been asked that a lot, and I've, I kind of laugh each time. But when the governor uh, calls and asks you to do something, it's very hard to tell him no. Uh, but even more importantly than that is when I went into the legislature back in 2003, I was very impressed with some of my Democratic colleagues and how they were interested in solving problems, not just kind of wedge issues and sound bites. And so I've always felt that responsible Democratic leadership and maintaining responsible Democratic leadership was important to the future of the state of Arkansas. And so both those reasons combined probably were the, the two, two big things that led me to take on this role. So tell me what you've been doing in the first two weeks of the job. What have you uh, been doing to hit the ground running? Well, we've been trying to uh, staff up, I guess you'd say. I think the Democratic Party of Arkansas has been understaffed over the last several months since the end of the, of the election cycle. So we're adding a communications director. Uh, we've added a new executive director, Amanda White, and uh, we're going to add some additional staff just to make sure that we are in a position to help our legislators and our other office holders. So those have been real important issues for me over the past two or three weeks. And then what's been important to me personally is just listening to some of our elected officials, Democrats out in the counties, folks from all over the state to hear their ideas and what they think the party should be doing so we can deliver on, you know, some of the goals that we're going to set to make sure that we're meeting people's expectations for what the future of Arkansas Democrats is. And what are those folks out in the state telling you? What are you hearing from them? Well, you know, people obviously, the last election cycle was tough on Democrats, and people are interested in what the plan is for the next two years. And so they really, I think they have ideas. Uh, They're hungry for some leadership from the state party as to where we're headed. And I think the number one thing that we've heard over and over again is the message of Arkansas Democrats being responsible leaders is, has, did not break through all the noise in the last election cycle. Uh, you know, we have a great story to tell. If you look around our border states and all the surrounding states, how Arkansas fared in this tough economy was really incredible. Time Magazine, all these different news organizations have acknowledged how great Arkansas made it through the tough period in the, the economy. We've got a lot of work to do. But that was based on strong Democratic leadership from Governor Beebe and in our House and Senate. And so we've got to figure out a way to get that message through to folks that, hey, although it's been tough, Arkansas has done better than many of our surrounding states and, and all the states in the nation. And we've entered one of the four states, I think, in this budget cycle to enter without a deficit. And that's, that's pretty incredible leadership on the part of Governor Beebe and our, our Democratic-led majorities in the House and Senate. You mentioned messaging. When you look back at the results from 2010, what do, what do you trace to the roots of why the Democrats did not do better? Was it more than just messaging? Well, I think there's a lot of there's been a tremendous amount of national bickering. I'll call it people yelling back and forth from maybe the outsides of each party, and all that noise, like I said, drowned out the Arkansas Democrat message. And uh, I think that was the the guts of it. People, if you were comfortable with your Democratic leadership, people were very comfortable with Governor Beebe. They knew him, Congressman Ross, and some of the representatives and senators who were reelected. They felt comfortable with them, and the bickering, the national noise didn't bother them. We have to drive the message of of responsible leadership and let make people realize how good a job Democrats have done in Arkansas. What to me is very important is. Arkansas Democrats really stand for the Arkansas people and good policy, not politics, not just trying to get a vote on an issue or uh, trying to make some point with a bill. We have to figure out how to govern. That's what we do best. We lead the state. We govern it responsibly. And we have to remind folks that how we navigated through that tough recession and are still navigating and, and how our state has risen to six, you know, Education Week, I think, was a publication that rated a six in education right now. How those things happen because of Democratic leadership, not because of wedge issues and 140-word tweets or something about different things. It's really good policy, people over politics, and that's the Arkansas Democrat message.
Will some people want to say that 2010 was an anomaly? Some want to say it was the the birth of a true two-party state in Arkansas. Do you think that Arkansas is a two-party state now? Well, I think it's been a two-party state. I mean, we're not that far from the, the Huckabee administration. I mean, let's not forget, it hadn't been that long ago that we that we had a, a Republican governor. So it's been a two-party state. I don't think 2010 was an anomaly. I think what you're seeing is some cyclical uh, back and forth. I mean, in 2008, the Democrats had a wonderful year. In 2010, the Republicans had a wonderful year. I think what we're hearing from people is that they want responsible leadership. They want their representatives, their senators, whether at the local level or at the higher level, uh, to listen to them, to get things done. And that's what we've been doing in Arkansas as Democrats, is getting things done and making sure that the state remains on a very uh, physically responsible, even keel where business and individuals can prosper. And, and I think that to say that somehow it was a sea of change in 2010 uh, may be an overstatement. To say that it was just an anomaly is an understatement. The truth lies somewhere in between. Well, let's look at the events happening at the state capitol. A lot of tax cuts on the agenda, um, Republican-sponsored and Democratic-sponsored. What do you think is the responsible approach here? Well, I mean, nobody uh, nobody wants to be for more taxes, all right? And Democrats have delivered the largest tax cut in Arkansas history with the food tax. And Governor Beebe has proposed an additional cut in the food tax, which is a broad-based tax that everybody will benefit from. I think the most the most important thing when you're talking about tax policy is you have to one you don't want to put the state in a deficit situation so anytime you're talking about cutting taxes you have to also talk about what are you going to cut from government you just don't cut revenue that the republicans at the national level and the state level have been addicted to this idea of what i call borrow and spend mentality where you want to cut something without saying how you're going to pay for that cut And Democrats at the state level, particularly Governor Beebe and our House and Senate members, have always, over the last several years, said, okay, we're going to have responsible cuts. Like I said, we deliver the largest cut in Arkansas history, but we're also going to make sure those are paid for and that we provide essential government services in an efficient manner. I always think it's irresponsible for anybody to talk about a cut or to talk about getting rid of of money or starting a new program without talking about how you're going to fund it or how you're going to pay for it. In our personal lives, you know, I have three kids, Roby, and and I know many people have children. You don't, in your own personal budget, say, okay, I'm going to work half. I'm going to work part-time, but I'm not going to adjust my spending, all right? And that's what... That's what responsible, responsible leadership says. If we're going to have cuts, if we're going to reduce our income, then what are we going to do to lessen the output? We all deal with our family budgets that way. And that, I don't understand why in state government sometimes we aren't more focused on putting that common sense to work. And Arkansas Democrats have been doing that for many years. Yeah, and I would point out that the Republicans have singled out the growth revenue in Governor Mike Beebe's proposed budget as an area to pare back spending to pay for the tax cuts. Democrats have pointed that out as well. Well, there is limited growth money in the budget. And I, and I will say this, it's probably a conservative estimate on, on growth. But that's, that's the way that Governor Beebe has governed, with conservative estimates to keep us on a sound financial footing. That growth is very limited in the budget. We also have an issue what we're trying to correct with our prison system and stabilize our prison population. And some of the growth money has to be used to stabilize our prison population. So we're spending money on our future, not on, on locking people up. Yeah. Let me ask you about prison reform. I, I know this is something you've given a lot of thought to. I remember you told me on your last day in the legislature a few years ago, you wish you'd done more to focus on the problems there. Uh, do you think that the reforms that are being proposed out there now have the chance to, to make some major corrections? I know there's the bill has been floated or parts of it. I haven't read the whole bill. I think that uh, responsible leaders understand that you can't lock up everybody. If you look at Arkansas's prison population compared to other states, we're incarcerating too many people. Now, we want all the violent offenders, everybody that we're afraid of, to go to prison. But those folks who are drug offenders and nonviolent offenders, we have to figure out a way to rehabilitate those people. I've long been a a big opponent of rehabilitation, the idea of transitional housing or halfway housing to help people transition back into uh, society. You know, I think, uh, uh, speaking as a former legislator, not necessarily the chair of the party, that we do our folks a disservice 
uh, when we don't rehabilitate them, when they, they're incarcerated for a few years and we have the leave the light on mentality, you know, the, I call it the Motel 6 mentality, that they're coming back. And so spending some money to ensure that we are rehabilitating people, to ensure that we're uh, transitioning them back into society where they can be tax-paying citizens and productive citizens is the right way to go. We're just holding too many people for too long. That being said, we want all the violent offenders to be held for, for the, the length of their sentence as best they can and to make sure that everyone's safe. That's the number one priority. But I think everybody agrees we have to focus more on rehabilitation. We have to focus more on keeping, uh, making sure that people have the opportunity to become productive members of society. And to think any other way is a, is a short-term view. We can't, keep, we can't build our way out of the problem. That's, it's, bad, it's bad policy and it's bad, bad physical policy. All right, Will, last question for you. Congressional redistricting is coming up. What do you expect to see happen? And I guess one of the more interesting developments is, is do you support a majority-minority congressional district? Well, let me take the, the general question of redistricting first. Uh, I think everybody's in a holding pattern for the actual numbers. They've kind of come out. I think there's a glitch with the computer system, so I haven't really been able to move the map around and uh, neither have our members and people that would like to look at redistricting options. Hopefully that's going to get straightened out this week or next week. So specific scenarios, it is a little bit of guesswork right now because we don't have the correct, uh, we don't have all the information in a format where we can make the computer systems run correctly. Uh, on specific proposals, I'll probably say at this time that I haven't been able to look at all the specific pro proposals. There, uh, there is no way to draw a majority-minority congressional district in Arkansas if you just look at the numbers. There's just no way to do it. And so, uh, and I think everybody realizes that. That's not to take a position on the issue. It's just a factual impossibility. What we want to do is look at the map. I think we want to be concerned, one, with Congressman Ross's views and obviously our other office holders' views on the map. Sure, the Republican Party is going to be concerned with their office holders' views on a possible map. And then I like to look at what is what makes regional sense, whose interests are aligned when you're looking at congressional redistricting. And then lastly, you've got to take into consideration that we've got a tremendous amount of population that we have to get out of the third district. And so that makes can make drawing the map uh, difficult also when you have to get a significant amount of population out of a certain area of the state. 